Okay, I'm going to show you today a little bit um, about how to work with the foliage brushes in color. If you've already seen my tutorial on how to uh, use them in black and white, then you're already ahead of the game because a lot of the concepts you use in black and white version uh, carry over to the color version. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to just make a tree trunk first. So this looks pretty acceptable to me, and now I'm going to start another layer, and I'm going to put this one underneath the tree trunk layer. This one is going to be the layer for the darkest leaves. I'm going to come up here and choose just the regular foliage brush. That's not quite the size I want. There, we're pretty close there. Again, you do want to consider your light source. We're going to go from this direction. I'm going to move this over. Alright, so here we have the base, and now we're going to go ahead and make another layer, this time above the tree trunk. And we're just going to choose a nice sort of mid-range-ish green. Maybe a little bit lighter. That'll probably work. So as you can see, we already have some things taking shape here. We maybe need to make the um, the underlay of the leaves a little bit darker. And to do that, you can actually go up here to the edit and do a tonal correction. And you can do brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, and luminosity. I think I'm going to do hue, saturation. Now I'm probably going to change the other layer real quick too. There, that looks better to me. So if you want to, at this point, you can continue making layers for each layer of leaves you you create. Um, I'm going to do another layer of lighter still leaves. And probably even a little bit lighter than that. I 
gonna go back and erase some of these stride layers. It's time to do some of the detailing. So I'm going to start with the uh, highlight and I'm going to switch to the calligraphy tool just like we would do with the, the black and white version and just go in and make a few marks of your own. If you prefer to use a different brush besides the calligraphy tool to make your own little leaf marks, that's perfectly alright. I just prefer the calligraphy tool. I like the way it looks. <coughs> Kind of thinking that maybe I want to change the darkest layer to have a little more blue in it, so I'm going to go back and use the tonal correction, switch up the hue a little bit. Alright, I kind of like that. Alright, time to you sample my color and add a few more marks. You can also go back in and add a few more tree branches. Basically at this point you're just going to be kind of massaging it to get it to where you want it to be. Um, one option you can do is you can start another layer and set it to add glow and try a yellow right for the time being. If you take the watercolor tool, the transparent one, you can kind of go in and start adding some of that dappled light behind the, it comes from behind the tree kind of glow. This is completely like your choice on whether or not you want to do this. You don't have to. You can make a perfectly fine tree without it.
but I do think it adds just a little bit something. One tip is to probably just go ahead and make some broad brush strokes. With a pretty, fairly decent sized brush. Otherwise, you're going to be here at it forever. This works really well in the dark spots of the tree because it gives a high contrast. And it'll blow out your highlights, so you what it'll do on the highlight areas. So I'm going to go back in and do a little bit of detail. So there we have a little bit of glow happening now with the tree. So it looks kind of like some yeah. Another option you can do is to go ahead and add another layer. And we're going to do a gradient. A gradient overlay. So we're going to set this layer to overlay. When you're using gradient overlays, don't get too crazy with it. If you use too many different types of color overlays in the same image, you're just going to make uh, electric boogaloo mess. So your best bet is to do one foreground to background um, and choose colors colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. So basically complementary colors. Choose some pretty crazy like saturated colors too. You, you'll be able to tone it down later. So here I have some com a set of complementary colors. I have a gold yellow and a uh, purpley color. Oops. All right. So now I have a yellow and a purpley sort of color. I'm using foreground to background. I'm on a layer called overlay, and I'm just gonna click and drag. And all of a sudden I have like this overlay gradient, which makes it look extra yellow at the top and kind of purpley down at the bottom. So that's kind of a nice effect, but maybe it's a bit too much. So if it is a bit too much, you can lower the opacity on that until you get it about as you like it. What this does is it's a really quick, easy way to add a little more color variety. But again, like I said, you can't abuse this because if you use too many different uh, color overlays, you're going to have far too many colors in your piece and it's just going to look like a huge electric mess. But um, what this has done here is it's uh, brightened up the yellows up here and kind of made them a little more lemony. It made these yellows down here slightly cooler. Over here we have some nice greens, a uh, basic green range. Down here we start getting some blue greens and then down here it's almost like purpley. And then uh, the, uh, the tree trunk is especially nice because it gets nice and cool colored down here where there's going to be a lot of shadow. But up here with these uh, branches it's kind of like a lighter color so it's going to look 
you know, it looks like it has more light on it, and it would because that's how trees look in nature. So it gives you a little more color variety without you having to sit here and paint at it a whole length of time. So it's really good for speedy comic work and uh, speed paints and things like that that you're just trying to get concepts down and you don't necessarily have a lot of time to spend on it. Personally, I would highly recommend you, um, if you're doing a painting, not to use some of these quick fix methods um, because you're going to learn more and really you should only use these quick fix methods whenever you're in a hurry but I don't know some people use them to really good effect it's up to you I guess but do learn don't just use um, the quick fix methods so that's about it for um, this tutorial um, feel free to ask any questions, and, uh, <laughs> well, I'll see you next time. <laughs>